Gareth Bale is back at Tottenham, moving from Real Madrid on loan for a season. At Real Madrid, Bale won everything there is to win, but of course, a lot of controversy with the Spanish media, but now he's back home. Although Bale has won pretty much every trophy there is to win, Spurs on the other hand, well, their trophy cabinet kind of looks like this. Jokes aside, of course, Spurs are trying to fix that. That's why they hire Jose Mourinho. They've got a very good squad now with players like Son, Harry Kane, and a lot of squad depth as well. With the addition of Gareth Bale, Spurs might just be able to win some trophies this season. And that's exactly what we're going to do in today's video. A one-season challenge with Gareth Bale Spurs to try and win some trophies. The rules of this challenge are as follows. The objective is to win a trophy. Let's get that trophy with Spurs. We can make any transfers required. We got to simulate every single game. But if we get to a final, that's the game we are going to be playing. So we could be playing multiple finals in today's video in case we get there. The time limit, of course, is one season because Bale's loan is just one season and the challenge is based around him. Okay, now let's start off the challenge by taking a look at the Spurs squad we've got at our disposal. And oh my God. Is this team really good? I think the 4-2-3-1 wide formation is what we're going to stick with. It just works with the players we've got here. Harry Kane up top, 88 rated. I think he's going to be really influential for us. We've got Hyungmin Son and of course, Gareth Bale on either side. Bale being 83 rated, I feel like is super, super harsh. He deserves a higher rating than that. Of course, in midfield, maybe a bit of a weak link here. Harry Wings and Hoiberg, they could definitely do better in that department. Regulo, another signing from Real Madrid on loan though. Davinson Sanchez, Alda Videld, Aurier complete the back line. Again, the back line needs a bit of improvement, I guess. With, of course, the captain, Hugo Lloris, in goal. Already after looking at this team, I think I've got an idea of where I need to make improvements. Probably a CDM, as well as maybe a centre-back. Now, the good thing with Spurs this season is... They've got squad depth. I mean, Pergwine, Lucas Mora as backup options. That's crazy good. And Dombele, Lo Celso as well. Musa Sissoko, Doherty. And they've got more players like Tanganga and Davies as well. So this first squad, a lot of squad depth. To spice things up, we're also going to have a few objectives that we're going to try and complete over the course of this challenge. One of them being is to win two trophies. It's going to be difficult though, but maybe the Carabao Cup or the FA Cup could be trophies we target to help complete that objective. But... I'm really trying to push for either the Premier League or the Champions League this season. Now, I know Spurs aren't in the Champions League in real life, but for today's video, we're putting them in the Champions League. Win the Premier League Golden Boot with Bale. As the video is about Gareth Bale, seeing him finish as maybe the top scorer in the Prem would be nice. Sign an 85 rated plus defender. With Jan Vertonghen gone, I think Spurs do need a centre-back, so we've got a pretty cool objective based around that. Win a Premier League Player of the Month award with Gareth Bale. Let's hope he can bag one of them. Okay, now we're working with quite a bit of money here. 72 million. That's not bad at all. With a wage budget of about 600, if we adjust that, we could be looking really good right now. So... I'm pretty happy with that, you know? If you guys do enjoy these challenge or rebuild style videos, make sure to drop a like on this one. Subscribe if you are new around here. We upload daily FIFA 21 career mode content. And also let me know in the comment section what different style of challenges we should take on. But let's get this underway. As you know, we need to sign an 85 plus rated defender. There's no way I'm signing that kind of a player who's young because we just don't have the money to do so. So I'm thinking we go for an older veteran centre-back in Leonardo Bonucci. He has the rating, he'll give us one good season. That's all we need. This is a one-season challenge. So I'm going to try and sign Bonucci for the exact purpose. We might not have to pay that much money for him and that'll leave us with cash to make other improvements in the team. So let's see if we can strike a bargain with Juventus for Bonucci. I'm going to start off with a £27 million offer for Leonardo Bonucci. Come on, you've accepted. It's a pretty good offer for someone who is... 33 years old. Oh my, they want Lucas. Nah, man, there's no way I'm giving Lucas away. He's such a good super sub to have. Let's propose a new transfer fee of maybe 32 million. Let's see if that works for them. I don't want to be giving Lucas away, man. Come on. 32 million for Leonardo Bonucci, and that works for them. Not bad at all. An 85 rated defender for that price. I'll take it. A crucial squad role for Bonucci as expected. A two year deal, 100,000 in wages. Let's see if he's willing to accept this. I think he's going to ask for more money. 
No, he isn't. 100,000 per week and Bonucci is now a Spurs player. We've completed one of our objectives already. Not bad for our first signing of the day, man. Leonardo Bonucci for 32 million. I'll absolutely take it. Now, I wouldn't be signing him if we were doing like a proper career mode for like four to five seasons. But as I said, since this is a one season challenge, we're going to have to take a different approach. And that's why Bonucci is at Spurs now. I still do feel like we need a bit of depth in that center back position. So I'm going to convert Eric Dyer to a center back. It'll only take a couple of weeks and besides, I feel like that is his best position. We still have about 50 million in the bank and I think we need a midfielder now to improve that midfield, of course. Harry Winks and Hoiberg, I feel like, simply aren't good enough if we want to be winning the big trophies and I feel like... Luka Modric back at Spurs could prove to be epic. He's a former Ballon d'Or winner. I mean, come on. We can't go wrong with that. I know he's going to lose his overall very, very soon. But on FIFA, I've noticed that players don't drop in their rating that often. So this might prove to be, again, a really smart decision to try and complete this challenge. Signing an 87 rated player into our midfield. Luka Modric, he's worth about 33 million, but his contract is expiring, so we could get him on a bargain. Let's see. Okay, so all my plans, I think, have been thrown out the window because Luka Modric holds a grudge against Spurs and he isn't willing to negotiate a transfer. I mean, what? Like, that is so weird. We are on strict negotiations, by the way, and that's why stuff like this might be happening. I've put it on strict to give us more of a challenge. That's what this, these kind of videos are all about. So... I guess we won't be signing Luka Modric. You know what I'm gonna do now? I'm gonna wait a bit before we get into the market for signing a CDM or a midfielder because we've got a few players that we can sell for like good cash like Danny Rose and Lamella. With that, we might have more money to go for a world-class player in that position. So let's just wait it out a bit. Even though I did plan initially on having Dyer in my setup, but we got a pretty good offer from Napoli, so I decided to accept it. Eric Lamela as well has been sold to Lille for about 23 million. We now have good cash to bring in a proper good midfielder. I think we might just be able to afford Leon Goretzka with the added funds we've got. So, you know what? Why not bring him in 84 rated, only 25? Offers a lot of versatility into our midfield. He'll be a great box-to-box -box player, he can also play like a proper CDM, so this seems like a no-brainer if we can afford it. I'm starting off with 60 million for Leon Goretzka, let's see what's up with that. They want Lucas Mora, everybody wants Lucas Mora at this point. I, I'd rather keep Lucas Mora, so let's remove him from the exchange, propose new offer, and I'm gonna offer 65, okay? 65 million now for Leon Goretzka. Is that gonna work for Bayern Munich? Let's see, 65 mil. It is gonna work, I'll take that. That seems like a fabulous deal for me. He's only 25, 84 rated. He's gonna have a great season, I feel. I'm literally offering him the same contract I offered Bonucci, about 100,000 in wages, 400,000 in signing bonus. Is he gonna accept? He is. And Leon Goretzka is our second signing of today's video. Look at that, boys. Leon Goretzka to Spurs is a done freaking deal. 84 rated. He's valued at 50 million, so I think we've done pretty well. Look at those stats. The strength, the reactions, the ball control all look fantastic. So, Danny Doors has been sold for about 12 million. That gives us some extra room to work with in terms of cash. And we're up to about 48 million. That's actually pretty amazing, you know. We could make another big signing, definitely. But you know what? I want to keep this squad I have for now and wait until January to make more improvements. We're going to keep things as is for now. That's the squad we've got here. A few players are losing overall because of maybe morale and sharpness. We're going to have to find a way to work through that. I might try and change Gareth Bale's position to a right mid. Let's see if that's possible. It'll be better for him. Or maybe we could just do this. Put him a little further forward, have him on right winger. Yeah, that works even better. I'm going to definitely try and change Leon Goretzka's position though. Let's make him a CDM. It's only going to take about 32 weeks, so that is a fair bit. Um, okay, we'll still do it regardless. We'll have him on that and hopefully it'll get done soon. But you guys have seen the squad we've got. It's a pretty good team. I'm expecting to win at least a couple of trophies, at least the cup competitions, man, because this squad is good enough to do so. Not sure about the Champions League and the Premier League. We'll have to see. But for now, let's sim until January and see how our squad is, you know, competing. Oh, and by the way, this is the Champions League group we've got for this challenge. Of course, Chelsea was in this group instead of us, but I removed them and put Spurs in just for the sake of this video. In this group, I'm expecting to top it. As expected, we've managed to top our group in the Champions League, which is awesome to see. I mean, as I said, against Sevilla and Rennes, you kind of expect Spurs to do so. That's the minimum requirement, and that's exactly what we've done. So in the round of 16, we'll be up against Club Bruges, and I'll absolutely take that. We should get to the quarterfinals at the very least now in the Champions League. But in the Premier League, I mean, look at this. We're halfway through the season. Top of the Premier League. Who would have thought 52 points? 
three above Wolves who are somehow second in the league. I don't know what's happening with them. Liverpool five points behind us at this stage of the season. Leicester in fourth, Man United in fifth, City outside the top five, Arsenal as well, Chelsea eighth. What is going on in the Premier League this season? This is absolutely insane, but we might actually end up winning the Prem this season. Yo, we're actually still alive in the Carabao Cup semi-finals against Liverpool. We might actually end up winning multiple trophies in this challenge. Come on, let's get it done. Well, it's not Gareth Bale who's been scoring the goals for us. It's Harry Kane with 18 and Heung-Min Son with 10. Fair enough. Kane, the top goal scorer in the Premier League at the moment. Now, I have been keeping tabs on the Player of the Month award. Unfortunately, Gareth Bale hasn't managed to win a single one. It's been Harry Kane and Heung-Min Son taking away the accolades. Although, I do end up winning a Manager of the Month award, so not all bad. Yeah, Gareth Bale hasn't really produced as much as we expected. Just six goal contributions in 26 games. You can't expect more. So, we're in the January transfer window at the moment, and honestly, I don't know what to do. I mean, we've got a lot of money in the bank, 65 million. We could definitely make a quality signing with that, but honestly, the team is performing so well and gelling so well. Do we even need to make a signing? You know what, maybe getting a better right back could work because look at every other player in the team. They're all getting big boosts because of their morale, form, sharpness and whatnot. But Serge Aurea isn't. So, looking out for another right back with that money and going big in that position could really help us out. I guess that's what we're going to do in this window. So I was looking at right backs to sign and then Kieran Trippier just popped up, the former Spurs player. Everybody remembers him for that free kick he scored in the World Cup for England. And I thought, you know what, for like 30 million bringing him back just seems like a smart buy and that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Gonna offer 27 million for Kid and Trippier. Let's see if Atletico are willing to accept that and they are. This seems like a very good bargain on FIFA 21 especially with how prices work in career mode during these times so fair enough I guess. Let's get the contract negotiations done. So the transfer window is shut and this is the squad we've got to work with until the end of today's challenge. I'm not gonna complain this squad is seriously unbelievable. We've demoted Bonucci to the bench because his rating has dropped a bit and he's unhappy. And that's why he's not getting big boosts. Whereas Davinson Sanchez is up to an 89. Aldo Vidal up to a 90. And yeah, the team is looking really, really fantastic. And let's hope we can keep this up. And it's now time to simulate until the end of the season and see if we can bag a few trophies. Now, unfortunately, we had to deal with an early exit in the FA Cup as we got knocked out by Leicester City. But in the Carabao Cup... We've made it to the final as we'll be up against Leicester City. A chance to get some revenge on them and a chance to win Spurs' first trophy in God knows how long. Let's get this done. As I said, every final that we get to, we're going to be playing. Let's play our first game with the Spurs team that we've built and hopefully get a trophy. This is how we've got our team set up for this EFL Cup final, the Carabao Cup final. we got to win this, man. We absolutely got to win this. I mean, look at our team. It's so much better than the Leicester team. Kane is basically a 93-rated player. We've got Bale, who's pretty high-rated. Let's hope we can score a few goals with him. That'd be lovely to see, but a strong Spurs side. Let's get it done, man. Let's freaking get it done. We're going to be using Goretzka and Kieran Trippier. Some of the new signings we made. Let's see how they fare. All right, boys. Let's do this. Carabao Cup final. Spurs versus Leicester. Let's bring some silverware home. Is anyone else upset that Gareth Bale is wearing number 9 and not maybe number 11? Oh, come on, man. Spurs, just give the man number 11. Because I kind of feel like that's what Bale was known for back at his time. And of course, Spurs. But we might be conceding a chance here to our opponents. Alder Vidal does really well there. Looking to create something out of nothing. Finds Hoiberg. Now it's Harry Kane. Inside. Right foot. Kane. Oh my god. Harry Kane is just something else on this game. 1-0 Spurs. We get the lead in the Carabao Cup final. Did you guys see the finish from Kane? The keeper didn't even move. And also, I think a Spurs player was there near the goal. I don't know what he was doing right there. But Kane just banged that one home while... Jared Bale was just watching. What on earth was Bale trying to do? If he would have like got involved with the shot there, that could have been called for offside. Bale, Bale was just ball watching there. I'm so confused on what Bale was doing there. That's hilarious. But anyways, 1-0 up. Spurs take the lead. The elements once again on the attack in behind for Slimani. Of all the people, we've let Slimani score against us. Oh. Leicester get the equaliser literally moments after we took the lead. It's so frustrating when this happens, but hey, it's game on, 1-1. One, one. We're seeing Leicester on the break now. They've already scored once. We can't allow them to score again. Chance for them. Big save from Hugo Lloris as Davinson Sanchez helps clean things up. I mean, since we got the lead early on, 
Leicester equalized and now they're probably the dominant team. This is not going according to plan. Telemans going for goal from distance and almost scored Hugo Lloris now. That was one hell of a save from the Frenchman. Leicester defending really deep but here goes Lo Celso on the attack. I need Bale to make a better run. What is this movement? It's actually worked in our favour though. Gareth Bale shot blocked. Why was Bale literally running in my direction? I have no idea. But now we still have another chance maybe. Lo Celso back for Gareth. Could look for a cross. Tries to find Kane. Controls it. Can't get the shot off anyways. He was offside there. I think I'll need to make some changes for this second half. I'm going to be playing Bale in that cam position. I think he'll do pretty well then. I'm going to bring on Lucas Mora for Lo Celso as somewhat of a super sub. Let's hope this works. Oh, here we go. Bale could release Harry Kane. Does he have the pace though? That's the real question. Harry Kane 1v1. Harry Kane with a ruthless finish. Bottom left corner and Spurs get the lead in the game yet again. It was Gareth Bale, the provider, playing in behind Harry Kane as he gets the assist there with that left foot of his. But it was Harry Kane with a fantastic finish to put Spurs 2-1 up. That trophy is in sight. Now, the last time we took the lead in this game, we conceded immediately after. We can't let that happen now. Harry Kane looks for Son and here goes Son. Through on goal potentially. Jungmann Son, difficult angle, left foot, but Kasper Schmeichel stops that. Maybe I should have gone for a cross or something, but it was inviting taking a shot there with Son. Inside now to Bale. Bale looks for Hoiberg. Back to Bale, holds up the play really well. Looks for Harry Kane. Backwards for Son, movement coming in from Reguilon. Cross comes in for Harry Kane. Ah, cleared away by Leicester City. Good football from us, we're really dominating this game. Full time and well, 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 we've secured silverware for Spurs. Finally, the wait is over. Tottenham have won a trophy. Yes, it's on FIFA, not in real life, but at least here on FIFA 21 career mode, we've managed to win Spurs a trophy. Let's go. Harry Kane with the brace. I would have loved to see more from Bale, but he still picked up an assist, so can't complain. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a sight you'll only be seeing on FIFA. Tottenham have won a trophy. That's right, Tottenham have won a trophy. I'm kidding, guys. I'm kidding. Under Jose Mourinho, I think they will win something in real life. But there you go. Hugo Lloris lifts the trophy and we've won the Carabao Cup. Now, we've still got two competitions left to play for. We might be playing a Champions League final if things go our way. Let's now sim until the end of the season. We breeze past Club Brugge in the Champions League 4-1 on aggregate. And with that, we're in the quarterfinals of the Champions League. And we'll be up against Inter Milan. And by the way, I've been seeing a lot of comments about how OP Inter Milan are in Champions League and simulations and whatnot. So this could be difficult. This could really be difficult. But reaching the quarterfinals of the Champions League, I still feel, is a big achievement. But let's hope we can knock Inter out. Here we go, guys. Simulating this one against Inter Milan with the visual sim feature. I think for these kind of videos in the big games, we'll do the visual sim. And let's hope we can get through that Inter team, man. Looks insane with Lautaro Martinez, Eriksen, Lukaku and whatnot. Nine Gulen as well. This is going to be a tough one. Inter looking likely to take the lead and wow, that's exactly what's happened. Raja Nine Gulen with the goal. Remember, we're not allowed to jump in and impact the result. We can only be playing finals. So keep that in mind. We're already a goal down and it's an away goal. We've got ourselves a free kick from a good spot. Bale is going to take this and Bale has scored a free kick for us. Let's go. 1-1. One, one. Come on. Uh-oh, they've made it 2-1. Lautaro Martinez with the goal. Oh, that's frustrating. Ali looking for Kane. Now back to Ali. Ali for Bale. Kane. Bale again. Ali again. Kane could shoot. Ali, Bale now. Bale has scored a brace here against Inter Milan. Let's go. The video is about Gareth Bale. And in the Champions League, he stepped up. So the first leg against Inter Milan ends in a two-all draw. Gareth Bale was insane for us in that first leg. Let's hope he can inspire us yet again against Inter for that second leg. Come on. Once again on the visual sim, remember, as things stand, Inter Milan go through on the away goals rules. So, yeah, they don't need to show intent. We do. Inter Milan on the attack now. This looks dangerous. It's chance for Lautaro Martinez and Inter Milan have scored. And that goal could sink our Champions League hopes because now Inter are leading 3-2 on aggregate and we need two goals to go through. That's tough. Another chance for Inter Milan and they've made it 2-0. It's Romelu Lukaku. Honestly, with 12 minutes to go, there isn't much hope. I'm just going to jump to result because it's over and that's how the game finishes. Inter Milan have knocked us out of the Champions League. At least we competed really well with them. Fair enough, I guess. Let's now sim until the end of the season and see if we can win the Premier League. That's the only competition left we're alive in. So far in this challenge, we of course got knocked out super early in the FA Cup. We won the Carabao Cup. 
We of course got knocked out by Inter in the Champions League, but can we win our second trophy of the season through the Premier League? Let's find out. So at least we are in the top six, that's for sure. Let's see. Okay, we're in the top five. We're in the top four as Leicester City finished fifth. We're in the top three. This is getting exciting. Wolves finished fourth in the league. We're in the top two. Man City with 78 finished third. Let's see if we win the Premier League or not. And we do. 96 points. That is mental. 96 points is actually crazy. We're the team that scored the most goals in the Premier League this season. Three points more than Liverpool. We just about managed to win the league title. So it's been a massive success this challenge with Bale. We've won two trophies, the Carabao Cup and the big one, the Premier League. And there you have it guys, Spurs champions of the Premier League. Harry Kane sitting alongside the Premier League trophy. Their player of the tournament, who's that going to go to? Harry Kane, I'm not surprised, who also ended up winning the Golden Boot Award. Team of the tournament, are we going to see Bale in here? We do see Toby Alta, we dealt. Virgil van Dijk, Robertson and Alisson. Let's see the rest of the team. Trent is in there, Sadio Mane, Rashford. We've got Heung-Min Son and Harry Kane. So three Spurs players in there with Alta, Widel, Son and Kane. No bail, which is a bit surprising. Harry Kane with 28 goals in 37 games ends up winning the Golden Boot Award. Son coming in with 18 goals as well. Anyone else in the top 25? Nope. Assist-wise, we did have Bale coming in with 8 assists, so at least Bale was up there in the assist charts. Son coming in with 7. Liverpool did end up winning at the FA Cup, of course. We won the Carabao Cup. What about the Champions League? Who ended up winning that? Juventus beat Barcelona in the final. Fair enough. Juventus destroyed Inter Milan 4-1 on aggregates. And what about the Europa League? Let's take a quick look. Ah, this is, this is painful. Fellow North London club, Arsenal, ended up winning the Europa League. Looking at the ratings of our players, honestly, not bad at all. Gareth Bale only went down by like one overall, even with that age, which is awesome to see. And he had like high sharpness and fitness throughout the season. Didn't even get injured, so that is pretty awesome. The team was fantastic, as of course we won the Premier League. Looking at the stats in detail, this is where things could get really interesting and spicy. So let's see the player that scored the most goals for us. I think it's Harry Kane with 37 goals in 54 games. Son coming in with 22, Los Celso coming in with 14, Bale scored 10 and 11 assists as well. So double digits for him. Goretzka coming in with 9. Here's a quick look at our challenges. We've managed to complete a couple of them. We won two trophies of course in the Prem and the Carabao Cup and we did end up signing an 85 plus rated defender. The Premier League Golden Boot with Bale or even the Premier League Player of the Month award with Bale didn't really work out. So 2 out of 4, I guess not bad. With that guys, it's time to wrap up today's video. It's been a big success. Gareth Bale's Spurs Challenge, of course, we ended up winning a couple of trophies. Bale was pretty decent, 21 goal contributions. His loan deal is set to expire and with that is of course this one season challenge. Would you guys consider this a success winning the Prem and the Carabao Cup? I certainly would. Hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you guys did, drop a like on this one, subscribe if you're new around here and well, I'll catch you guys next time.